Um, watch that Ready Player One. I went to the thi- because I had to know. Okay, fair enough. It's th- it's the reason. Ernest Klein's Ready Player One. Uh, is that the guy's name? Mm-hmm. All right. So, I have a couple things to say about this movie. Now, nobody in this area saw the movie. Yes? I read the book. You read the book? Great. I remember you read the book. I was mm-hmm. telling people on Twitter mm-hmm. that you read it. I didn't actually need that, but I acted surprised. <sighs> For drama. All right. So, if you care about Ready Player One, the movie, or possibly the book, you're going to want to skip ahead. Because I'm going to spoil the whole fucking movie. Like, for real. Wooly, can you put a timestamp in here for when uh, we stop talking about this shit? Sure thing. We can... We can... Use some sort of creative sound effect. Well, that's, that's the sound of. Use yeah, a well, sound just, effect. I'll, just, I'll grab something from the eighties. That'll just, probably. Just, be. I was gonna just, say, use one that just people put recognize. Something that says "skip to so and so." How about the sound of Pac-Man dying? Well, 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 well what I mean is, people need to know when to come back, right? Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So the movie has a lot of problems. But they can be summed up in a couple main points. How right? how how's about that Columbus, Ohio? Who even gives a shit? How's about that Parsifal? Doesn't matter. Okay, go. I'm gonna I'm gonna mm. quote Matt on this. Okay. Person who didn't see the movie. Yeah. What's your most hated type of movie, Matt? Bad ones? No, not good. Mundane ones. You like great movies is... and you like shit. Movies. Nothing worse yes. than a. Uh, five out of ten. It is you would rather have a zero or a ten. Yeah. It is a five out of ten. So that that alone is the biggest problem. It is slavish to its adherence to the eighties movie formula of good guy and good guy meets the girl and then the bad guy's bad and the but, way that an eighties movie villain is. The, the villain's kind of like a businessman, Biff mm-hmm. kind of guy. Mm-hmm. But so is Stranger Things, no. one would say. I would not but say. But Pat. Sl- sl- Stranger Things goes its, in its own direction. I, and its plot yeah. structure. I know, I know, I know. I'm, okay. I'm using it. Okay. And its plot structure does not follow necessarily the beat for beat. Ready Player One has a serious plot structure problem. And the movie, the acting is fine. There's, I mean, there's no great performances, but it's fine. It's totally good i believe that these people are 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 the characters kind of thing the writing uh, dialogue wise like in terms of people talking to each other more or less fine Mm -hmm. the action is relatively well directed Mm -hmm. spielberg made the movie Mm -hmm. it's still a spielberg movie so that part that all all of its production all the pieces that make a movie a movie they're all competent at least Mm -hmm. right the problem happens from its structure and its basic premise and its use of its core elements, right? So the biggest problem with the movie is its structure by far. Now, I don't know how the book works in regards to this, but it is a pretty simple 80s three-act structure, right? It's, it's even codified in the film as got to get the three keys. Mm-hmm. So each act of the movie is the is the fight for the three keys. Yes. The first key is your, your setup to the world. Yep. And your second key is your, your mix-up of, of various themes. Your rising climax. And your, your, third, your third key is the giant action scene with Revelation. Exactly. So not only is each sequence literally identical in terms of goal because it's get the key and this is you could you could say that's kind of like a never-ending story kind of thing or like a classic adventure thing but in terms of plot structure the acts the the actions in and outside of the fake world are also identical all three acts are literally exactly the same in that we're gonna have the setup of the clue for the key we're going to have the characters argue and sleuth and kind of do mm-hmm. do the digging for the, the thing. They're going to engage the challenge. We're now going to move to the villains. The villains are going to talk about being villains and what the plan is for the story after the villains win. Now we're going to cut back to the heroes as they start to succeed on the, chan- uh, on the challenge. Now we're going to come back to the villains. Now the villains have found the real world location of the heroes. Then the heroes are going to get the key 
then the villains are going to... Oh, they found them! We're going to attempt to murder you. Because we're, no, we're bad people. Are they like children? They are, in fact. It's a bunch children. of kids in an MMO. <laughs> right. All right. So we're going to attempt to murder you. People are going to get murdered, but not the characters. The characters are going to miraculously escape to the new hideout where they will jump back into the game for the start of the second trial, which starts with sleuthing, going through the... Oh, no! They found a real-world location. They're going to... The ending of the movie ends up being exactly the same thing. Like, it is literally three mini-movies back-to-back. Identical. It's shocking. In, yeah. in its repetition. Uh, there's... If I, It's been a while, but... In in the book, there's the in, there's the one big real life storming of everyone's houses. And this that one I'm going to assume is the massive explosion that occurs. It, it, and like the and then the he, he gets possible gets pulled into the the, the enemy base and yeah. all that shit. Yeah, yeah that enemy happens base. and that's the thing. They they they, yeah. they modify no, th- that for the. They literally the have a base. Be- like enemy base. Yeah, no, it, they have a little <laughs> literal enemy base. Yeah, yeah. So like the the fact so the the biggest like I mean structure wise, when you're in the third act and you've seen the first two acts end identically. Before they even reach the planets that they're supposed to get the key and do all that stuff, you already know in your heart that they're going to find their physical location and that the events of the the finale are going to be alongside a real-world attempted murder. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know that 20 minutes ahead of time. Like, way before. And it it even ends the same way as they all do. Like, it's it totally robs it entirely. And that's regardless of any of like the nerd rage that I would have over references or anything like that. Like it's boring and it's so predictable. It is way more predictable than your average, like, like it's like, it was more predictable than the Ninja Turtles movie. Like it, it's, that's a weird poll. Well, I just pulled anything, An 80s but reference. you know that part where they go to the base <laughs> in the winter in Jersey in Ninja Turtles. The, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- that part was out of nowhere. There's yeah. no part of this at any point that's out of nowhere. That's out of nowhere mm-hmm. because there's nothing original in the film. And when I say that, I don't mean like because of all the references. I'm gonna go and like look. They didn't make anything new. Well, as you as you pointed out, the structure itself is a reference. The, yes, the structure itself. Even the main character is uh, his his dad named him in reference to like a comic book character. That's why his name is Wade Watts. Because it sounds like Bruce Banner and, or Clark Kent. And what you, what you get in the book is like a, a paragraph to, to explain, did you know that, by the way, that this was the thing? So the, <laughs> the movie probably uh, gets one up on the book by default because it can't do that. It literally can't do that. There's yeah. no time in yeah. a film to do that. The DeLorean shows up and no one says the word DeLorean. You're right. It's just there. Yeah. No, the book has to stop and explain to you that this now, is now, the car. Now, every time the DeLorean appears on... I mean, on, on, the car. Every time We're the talking DeLorean about appears on Back the screen, to the Future here. One of the greatest... Yeah. They're going to use the fucking Back to the Future uh, twinkle sound effect sure. as like a fucking right. gas reel. But So the structure's a massive problem in terms of just general watchability. The core premise, and let's say it's outside of video games yep. or pop culture. Let's j- remove that entirely because I don't want people to take away that I hated the movie because, oh, they've ruined the Gundam or fucking whatever, right? Mm-hmm. The core premise is so outside the realm of the average person's day-to-day life and so enamored with its own subject matter that the first like 40 minutes of the movie is like 90% exposition. In terms of explaining what the Oasis is, Ooh. explaining how the Oasis works, yeah. explaining how this works, the explaining guy why it, this why is. he did the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the same. It is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. But what you're talking about with the, um, with, uh, how the first act goes and whatnot. Yeah. There's so much explanation in the book build up, like, before they even get to, like, the key shit. Well, they have to get to the key shit right away in the film like they're they're in the key shit in in the opening 10 minutes okay because they have to because there's a lot to 
Yeah, they have yeah. to build up. The, well, I'm I'm curious to see what they would have dropped in. What they but as cut, as but a result yeah. of that, like, dude, it is it is nonstop exposition for two thirds of the movie. Okay. To to because ex- it's not just exposition about the mechanics of the setting, mm-hmm. which are not like uh, intuitive at all, even to video game players, because there's all these little extra bonus mm-hmm. rules. It is. It, then it's exposition about the nature of the story and who this uh, holiday was and Dude. all this stuff. And it's just nonstop explaining to the audience. And as a result, the characters don't get to be themselves. The only thing that I know about any of these characters at all is what particular movies they like. Okay. That's the it, that's the only thing that has time because, to come through. Because what you're getting what you're getting in the books is like Wade looks at a thing and then like it goes back to for those who didn't know blah right. I I don't know anything about Wade that the actor didn't do with like his portrayal of the character like the detail like here's where I live and here's the movies that I like and yeah. th- and that's that's pretty no, much it. That's that. The, I, I I feel like oh God, it's been so long, so I don't remember if there was much outside of like the present, mm-hmm. you know. But the idea was just we were all we're all stuck in a shitty fucking stack of of trailers yeah. that and, the end, right? Like um, it it the exposition like crawls all the way up its own ass at one point to in service of its own references. There is a scene early on in which uh, Parsible grabs Artemis and they go to H's workshop, right? And they're having exposition about the nature of the key and how that works and like these are things that are kind of moving the plot along sort of right Parzival stops and looks at a lunchbox and says hey have you seen this shit and opens the lunchbox and we blow about 120 seconds maybe longer of him literally picking up spaceships out of a box pointing them at the camera and going look it's the Battlestar Galactica Remember that? Right. And I, I am not yeah. joking yeah. because he is talking to a character yeah. and saying, how the hell? Now that sounds like the book. Right? <laughs> and it is. It just, that sounds incredibly accurate. It kills the momentum of the scene. But did your favorite thing show up? I love the Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. And there's a dec- there's a, there is a <laughs> decent Star Wars gag. There's. In in the yeah in the they movie? couldn't mm. actually have stuff in it I read but there's like a gag there yeah, is a decent Star Wars gag where they show Halliday's funeral and the flowers are arranged in the Star Trek Enterprise right and because he's a huge dork and you're like oh yeah okay that's appropriate the um the 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 build up to the climax in the books like involved like everyone getting in their mecca right yeah. that was that was but, but, uh, <laughs> it's like I can't emphasize how much like the scene just stops. And it doesn't stop for a second or yeah. throw away like Family Guy would, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It just it fucking when, hit the fucking brakes. The chapter stops <laughs> to tell you about Joust and everything you need to know about See, this that's, old classic that's video fine game. fine for a book because a book can meander and take its time. The author doesn't care. The, the, but the like, movie yeah, has a limited runtime. The run movie time. has a limited runtime. Yes. So it but, stands out really but bad. It's, but it doesn't, but it doesn't like stop the, the, the page from feeling like, but did you know? No, no, for sure. But things work better in print. And, and the problem as well, right? And I think this is something that is a bit unique to, um, I guess, us. But it's like we're an audience of people that lives in this shit. We're exposed to it every day. There's yeah. no moment of, hey, do you remember? Of course I do. I talked about it last week. Mm-hmm. Right? So we're not that. No. And that's that's a really important thing here, right? There's a, there's so much of this that is really just intended for, oh, fuck, I remember that. And when you never have that reaction because – Every day so, of your life is exposed to so this now stuff. I, it like, fails to I, I have, it fails to I work. I have been trying yeah. explicitly to get away from even talking about, about that the pop culture beca- stuff because there's so like, much. More when to I was it. shitting on this game, uh, the, sorry. When I was fuck, I keep calling it a game. I <laughs> literally keep calling yeah. it a game. That means it worked. When I was shitting on the movie on on Twitter, it people, had nothing people to do were with coming the, back. The, it was like, oh, you're just mad because they did it. It's like, yeah. no, no. The movie is bad. It has nothing if, to do. Yeah. Okay. This is like beside all of that. If this was a fucking, if this was Last Starfighter, yeah. I would have this problem, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so let's talk about Artemis. Wooly, what does Artemis look like in the book? Artemis is, uh, I, she's a cool character avatar, and then it's secretly revealed that in real life, uh, she's not. Okay, so that is a story element in which after one day, Parzival's like, I love you. And she, and the reaction isn't, whoa, bro, that's creepy, dude. It's, you don't know me. You don't even know what I look like. I This is just my avatar. That, that goes down like two-thirds into the book. Mm -hmm. Very quickly. Wow. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, that, that takes a while. It's very quickly to the point where it's like, uh? Like, mm. dude, like the character's been in three scenes. L literally. Oh, wow. That's weird. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, you don't like, you don't love me. This isn't what I really look like. This yeah. is my avatar. So it's setting up like, okay, let, we're going to. So, when Parzival's uh, home gets blown up and his relatives get killed, um, we don't have time to show him be upset. At no point is he upset. He walks away kind of stunned and then gets kidnapped immediately and meets Artemis for real. Hey, Artemis, hey, it's you. Artemis is played by Olivia Cook. Uh, there's a reason I'm bringing this up. I have pulled sure. up a photo of Olivia Cook for you. <laughs> I can see it. I can She's see it. very attractive. That's a very pretty lady. It sure is. So what do they do? They make her dress down in like uh, baggy clothes. Yep. And they give her a birthmark on her eye. Kind of, kind of looks like a vertical Brent Suko. Like, like spot the dog. A little bit. Okay. I, that, it's, li it's a light brown is, birthmark is that, that the, goes is that from the about avatar the, character the, with the stick on his face. That's Zuko. Okay. A cool. little from about the middle of the forehead <laughs> down <laughs> to the the yeah. the bra the the lower brow line. Oh no. Very light brown. Okay. Movies, man. That's Hollywood, dude, though. I, the, you know, you know, the you know. camera <laughs> treats her. You can't. Dude, the camera treats her like fucking Quasimodo. It's so <laughs> weird. It's so uh, weird. Because yeah. it is a very hot, pretty girl. Well, that's no. So, with yeah. a slight. Oh, well, hold on. Let me let me get there. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> and the scene that plays out is so fucking embarrassing. Because it is actually, they actually do it. It's like one, his family just died, whatever. It doesn't matter. He, instead of being sad, he's going to creep on this girl immediately. Immediately. And the response is like, just, they're going to, they're going to frame it. So she's constantly trying to get the hair in front of her, in front of her vicious deformity. <laughs> and he's like, right. man, I don't even, I don't even care. And she's like, don't tell me that. I, I live with this every day. And like, they're playing it. Like, she's got, like, a fucking burn victim face or some shit. And it's it's legitimately like a, uncomfortable. Like a goiter. It's yeah. so weird. That's Hollywood that Ugly. does sound a little Hollywood weird. Ugly is... No, but that's different. I can't think of... Like, you're saying it, like, even looks cool. It's... Mm, I it, didn't notice it. Because on, on the very first time that you see it, it's her hair parts and you see it behind her. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice it until... He then says something about it, or she tries to hide it. Like it didn't even register. Look, you know what? That's weird. I've been listening. That seems like something that would be in an '80s movie, where someone has a slight deformity or, or something. Mm -hmm. And the '80s, '80s kids would be like, "Freak!" Ha ha ha! Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so that this is why this is stupid. A, the movie is made in 2018. Where like a birthmark could be cool and nobody cares because it's who cares anymore, right? right. And B, it, it's in the fucking future, it's in 2040, where we should even be more beyond it. Even ever. at the even at the end of the movie when they're billion trillionaires, she doesn't decide to get it fixed because or, or whatever. But like fucking, it's nothing. No. You, you know what I hate the most? Like a, a trope that especially in the 90s or like aughts is when there's a girl <laughs> and she's like dark. She's got like dark. Like bags, uh, her eyes. bags in her eyes, yeah. and she's like mm, kind of morbid. And she's like not really into things. And then during the movie, she changes, and all the makeup is <gasps> gone now, oh. and she's happy, oh. and she's finally spending time with her like fucking brother or whatever. And the parents are like, "I'm glad you got out of that phase that you were. I'm glad you're not you anymore, or whatever." Like always oh, a phase. Sure, like, yeah, I hate yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, it's like. Yeah. And then and then on, on the like and, and on the way to school like like bullies are going freak yeah throwing yeah paper and she's at her. like I'm fucking I got dark makeup it's on just, it's just the glasses I'm Wednesday of the, Adams uh, yeah, over exactly, here okay yeah. I have found a photo from the movie 
Yeah. To show you, this is the Quasimodo freak beast they portray in the movie. Yeah, okay. It looks now, like she's got a cool, like, eye, I don't, eye paint. I don't, I really, like, I can't. War paint. All I remember Dude, is that I, the impression I got from the books was that it was a way bigger deal in general that her physical appearance it, was not what so, it implied. So, like, you're right. This has this is, like, almost outside of the movie itself. This is Hollywood. Um, but, and, and it reminds me of, like, how, um, uh, like, Amy Schumer was getting shit over her recent movie with the, like, uh, the, the like, her self confidence changes. I don't know if you've seen that. Like, I have a, not. Oh yeah, no. It's she like, hits it's her a trailer head. Trailer where like she's like, oh, I'm like overweight and like I'm not that attractive or whatever. She bangs her head and she thinks she's the hottest thing ever. Right. right. So it's like you own it. I'm like, no, you gave a stupid reason. Like she should just come to that conclusion <laughs> by herself and her own self worth. Not some. It's I a, got knocked in it, the head. I it, must be crazy. It's 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 a comedy as opposed to a, a realization. Yeah, but, but shallow, I bet you that's the end of the movie. Shallow yeah. Hal, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was fucking magic or some. She got cursed by a gypsy or something. It was like <laughs> fucking magic, and that movie was like 15 years ago. That was Jack yeah. Black, right? Yeah, yeah. Jack Black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that's fucking wild, and mm -hmm. like it, and like you're sitting there, like, and it's I'm 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 like not even interacting with the movie. I'm just interacting with like Hollywood in that mm -hmm. moment, where I'm like, mm -hmm. am I fucking nuts? So apparently, now I'm gonna talk about the fucking reference shit, and to close this out, apparently there is a real Steven Spielberg quote. In which he says, I want I people who see this movie, that when they see something they recognize, to stand up and clap and say, I know that. Yeah, this, this, this quote's well, super old. Hey, man, this is our Black Panther. <laughs> yeah, no, that's oh, the quote. You. That's the you get, actual It's a quote. two! Well, you get two yeah, Black Panthers! I get two Black get Panthers! Two, that's not fair! It's Christmas and my birthday. Um... Like the very idea that if I try to walk into Black Panther or uh, Ready Player <laughs> One, and then like there's like a fucking metal detector, but it detects your skin, just kicks you out, <laughs> is ridiculous to me. But whatever. All right. So so here's the problem: is that Spielberg though, like, what, what, was what, Boom what? Blocks in the movie? Did Boom Blocks show up? That's Maybe the in best the video game. Like, like character. this, this is the closest someone like Steven Spielberg can get to these references. Oh, you know what? You know what? Before I get to the references, I actually want to complain about something else sure. in terms of movie magic. Mm -hmm. You know what signposting is? Yep. Chekhov's gun, all that stuff. Sure. You show it in the movie. Mm -hmm. Bring it back a few hours later. Mm -hmm. So remember my complaints about the structure. Those complaints are magnified tenfold by excessive signposting. Every single element that will ever come to play in the movie is shown to you 35 minutes before it shows up in the movie. Like, in a staggering sequence. Usually in a movie, you have like maybe one of those where it's like, that thing came back, oh, and it solved the problem. You're saying there's like multiple. They go movies. into a goddamn store and look at items, and every item they look at has a thing, to play yeah, a fucking a role in the yeah, final yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's and it's like you, you, have, you should have some false items that don't come. So into once play. that well, isn't the entire, but but that's like all the inventory they build up over the. No, but like there's one item that they don't get because why would anyone pick an item that kills everyone on the planet? And then the final battle, all oh, the bad guy has, and it's like. Once that starts to happen and you have any memory at all, you like the game, the, the fucking shit, the, the movie <laughs> has such a predictability problem. If you're actually watching it, like if you're actually engaging with it, right? Where every element has to cut the, Hey man, that's cool. The iron giant, you're building it. That's rad. Yeah. It's a commission. Course that will come in. Like uh, even even if you even if you did not see the, the I don't know I don't know because if there's tons of references all the time you don't know which ones will show up later right. There's is, a, is there's, there is there big references that if someone goes oh yeah, yeah, yeah and I'm, then not, they I'm don't not talking show about up. references I'm talking about things that are pointed out as significant in universe. Okay. Sure. Like there's a difference between Goro showing up for a gag, uh, and going hey that's that thing that affects our lives over there goro i hope can we never lives. but you know what i mean right <laughs> uh, what uh, goro what... could be life affirming what was the cg like it's fine 
It's totally fine. Okay. Uh, there is one problem with the CG. In the video game, does it look like a video game, or does it look like... Uh, it looks a, like a, a more CG. realistic yeah, okay. uh, uh, Wreck-It Ralph. Universe. Okay. Uh, the CG has one problem, and that is um, because of all the shit they're trying to jam in a frame, it is an explosion of shit. Like, it is impossible to see any specifics. That's why you need to see it multiple times. Like, like uh, me and my friend uh, Dan were watching it, and like... Was that a battle toad? I don't know Could've because there's a, like for one frame there maybe was a battle toad on screen because it it is an explosion. It is in, like the big battle scene yeah. is unintelligible. There is so well, much get... and and they're doing zoom ins on specific characters so that you can get it, but there's so many they want to hit that they're going so fucking fast. Buy the Blu-ray. Well, so and pause it. the description of that <laughs> exactly chapter why they did it. was pretty much just talking about how everything and everyone's yeah. crazy avatars were there. But they, again, they made special emphasis on the giants, and there was Ultraman and Mecha Godzilla <sighs> and uh, uh, fucking. I guess that's where like Iron Giant like replaces. So, so because I'm um, like the same brands could not so, have been used. Uh, Bla- of note, Ultraman and Blade Runner were attempted to be acquired as rights for this movie and the people owning those rights would which i'm gonna assume would be ridley scott the, yeah. and whoever the fuck owns ultraman over in japan were like nah okay. and they are very replaced okay because um, yeah the um von kent uh blah, blah, the machine the blade runner machine yeah is a thing that gets that gets re- referenced uh-huh. in the book. I was told it's not even Mecha Godzilla in the movie. It is it's, absolutely Mecha. It's Mecha Godzilla. Cure you. They, I've been told by someone that has worked for Toho. Yeah. That it is not in any established design. That's no, it's ever a new design. Cre- there you go. Oh, they made one. It is a new design, uh, okay. but a character goes. <gasps> It's Mechagodzilla, okay, and it's okay. like that's that's but, fine. And then they got the license. But let's but... let's even move beyond that to general Same. problems with these references. And, Mechagodzilla you know, is so cool. You know who's the best person to use for the general problem with these references? Mm. It's Iron Giant, a movie that I have not seen. For the record, ah, okay, that so, explains a lot about you. So apparently, Iron Giant is not a gun. Iron Giant is a giant is robot, it... and he loves war. Okay, so no, yeah, whatever, but. <laughs> So here's the thing. Fighting is the best. And a lot of people are getting confused <laughs> at, at people's to reaction to my reaction to Iron Giant because I don't have an emotional attachment to Iron Giant, right? Iron Giant is the perfect example of what's wrong with this movie's references because the problem with Iron Giant is not that he shoots a big gun and gets into a big war scene. It's an avatar. It's not it's, actually the Iron Giant. It, that, that is, that is, Someone not, using that is his, totally his trivial. It doesn't matter, yeah. right? Yeah. Like that could be anything. And the fact that it's Iron Giant, I, even, I can even appreciate, oh, that's cool. Right? If it was anybody but the pacifist robot. The problem with it is that this is a universe in which we have established that the worst thing that can happen to you in universe is that you zero out, which is you lose all your items. You permadeath, you lose your cash, essentially. You mm-hmm. lose up your virtual accruement of items. Mm-hmm. So when Iron Giant gets into a big fight with Mecha Godzilla and loses, because of course he does, like, the camera f- k- tracks the falling iron giant oh no and he crashes into the snow as he comes to rest in front of the camera and his head falls down and the eyes blink out Mm -hmm. and the the camera lingers and there's like a little sad thing to the music the person in that robot is fine there's nothing to be sad about other than the fact that 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 reminds you of iron giant yeah there's no depth Superman to that moment at all. That's if you stupid. don't know who Iron Giant is. Well, it's, it's extrinsic, is yeah. what you're saying. But that's yes. especially stupid because the Iron Giant in this movie shot like fought a Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. So, like, I'd be sad if it was an Iron Giant that tried to talk to Mecha Godzilla <laughs> and like tried to be friends. But right. it's a fucking yeah. asshole but, Iron right. Giant. I, you're right. It's like it's it's they are banking on the image of the mm-hmm. thing you like not even the reference or not even the character yeah to remind you of that old thing and they're using that old feeling yeah. instead of making a new feeling mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. and that's the problem with the references in this movie it's not that they're used for their own sake or oh look that's goro or oh, hey look that's uh, uh fucking buckaroo bonsai or, or whatever it's they're always used in place of actually putting a, a, a story element in there at all 
They just use it as, as, a, as a cheat sheet to push your buttons, right? So then, when Iron Giant, of course, gets back up to make a human bridge, right? So that everyone can cross the lava. The Stand Tall start playing? No. Oh. Worse. What is the worst reference I could mention now with the robot and the lava? Anybody? Terminator? So when Iron Giant falls into the lava, the person controlling Iron Giant, guess they go, well, might as well, and, and gives a, a big thumbs, thumbs up, up as they go into the lava, which now kneecaps the earlier scene in which the death of the robot was supposed to be taken uh, no, seriously. No, no, don't do that. Like, it's, it's, it's pointless. But it's another reference, and, and again, though. and again, the fall into the lava, it's, the camera treats it sad. It's another reference. See, that's fine to uh, reference Terminator 2. When Scorpion does it in Shaolin Monks, it's awesome. Like, but you, it, Iron Giant is in the uh, Terminator. Do you like Iron Giant, Avatar piloting guy, or do you like Terminator? Why didn't you just become the Terminator? Well, I mean, the well, ter like, but Terminator. It, but it, it, the whole, every time it happens, it's you're going like, wait, what are you actually trying to make me feel right now? Yeah, you're trying, trying to, to make the, he's trying to make you feel, oh, and, I see what you did there. Right. So as, as somebody who gets almost every single reference this movie throws at you with a few exceptions, um, the first half hour of the movie is physically like cringe. Like it is like, I'm like you're recoil. I'm laughing because I'm uncomfortable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I feel like, like yeah. I, like, like I am embarrassed because the people and the way that they talk in this in this film are the people we no longer hang out with from college mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they're those people the ones that can't let it go and you don't like them i don't like these characters cuz i know people like them and i don't like those people <laughs> right it's a very yeah. specific thing yeah 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 and after all of that after all of that <gasps> sorry you just remember. I something. just remembered something very important that that uh, <laughs> just we'll talk after. We'll after, talk after after oh, yeah. it's one after gross. all of that. There's one thing the movie does with the reference stuff that is actually like awful, like outside of the film, and that I would say that it poison pills one of the greatest movies ever for a generation of people who don't know that movie because the movie's fucking old. The movie is way older than almost anybody who's seeing this movie for, because of spoiler reasons. Because of the way that it's portrayed. Okay. The entire second act of the movie takes place inside the Overlook Hotel of The Shining. Okay. I didn't know that. The whole second act. It is the entire... They... they that's, that's super not... They, that's new. They let... It was supposed to be something... It That was what Blade Runner was supposed to be. Yeah. And okay. they couldn't get it, that so was, they went Shining. Uh, Blade Runner would have been more thematic. So they go... What was wow. Halliday's favorite movie of such and such a weekend? It was The Shining. So we go to a theater and we walk into a admittedly astonishing recreation of The, of the Overlook Hotel from okay. The Shining. At which point they go through almost every single story beat of The Shining as if it was a fucking Family Guy episode with video game characters. And a character in there. Of course, they haven't seen The Shining. Mm -hmm. So they run up to the elevator and, oh, no, I'm being washed away by a tidal wave See of blood in a big video game rap scene. And here's room 237 where I get attacked by a zombie lady. But then when I get kicked out the door, I'm in the hedge maze. And I'm being attacked by a not Jack Nicholson because they won't show the character's face or even silhouette. Okay. And a giant 100-foot-tall... A uh, zombie lady with an axe in a big boss fight, and the and then at the end they just rip the whole thing in half and have a weird zombie dance sequence uh, over a pit. Were they were they trying? No, they <laughs> they try and combine The Shining with one of the creators' older games, which I'm going to assume is supposed to be an homage to Maniac Mansion. I don't know. And the whole thing. Okay. It's it's so weird and like it's this weird mix of like clear loving respect because they tried so hard to get so many of these things on point and tonal explosion in that 
like the 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 two little girls down the hallway is played for a goof with a character that never saw the shining and i cannot i cannot imagine what somebody who goes to check out the shining now after seeing this first mm -hmm. will feel in that like i feel like that movie has been like jacked for a, a, a whole audience of people and to those who would say no that's ridiculous if I had not put the spoiler warning before the segment of the podcast, you would be mad because I would have influenced your opinion of the movie before going to watch it. And I would have screwed that up for you. Chances are the thought process was it's old enough that, like, meh. You know? Yeah, I guess. Um, and the gags don't even land. Like, I know the example that people are going to use is The Simpsons did a shinning episode. The difference is that episode's hilarious. This is not. It's It's lazy and it's so what you're lame. saying is they should have used the um the resident evil mansion that would have been fun that would have been totally totally appropriate actually you would fucking love the movie you, yeah, probably. well no but because that, <laughs> that thing, because that that mansion is not to be respected it's fucking dumb it's true right it's right. a dumb video game level which would be totally appropriate and like i i <sighs> when i was talking about the movie on twitter i'm like everybody pour one out for eye patch wolf if he ever comes back Right, uh, and I spoke to him, and I think he was wasted when I was talking to him on Twitter because he was mad. So expect an awesome video of the thing I'm saying right now incoming from iPads. Well, it, um, it it ultimately like like I said, uh, it was it's it's similar to when I, I finished the book in the sense that it's kind of just I was just thinking like like um it's unclear. It's not well. Okay, I made the mistake of I felt it was like unclear who it was for. Now I know who it's for. And it and like that's a very, it's for everyone. It's for my sister that's like five years older than me. But but y yes, but does your sister like again? But it's for people that know the things, like the no, things, I know and it. haven't no, thought about them. I, in, no, it's it for my sister. Yeah, no, okay, you know who sure. it's for, Willie? It's for people that heard about The Shining but never actually watched The Shining and go oh yeah that's the shining cool no because i think those references would go a bit too far for anyone that's never seen it it, it has to be more than that it, you have to have some appreciation and love for a delorean and for maybe not tracer but you know what i mean but a uh, um oh man you get to a fucking a fucking uh, ultraman you or get to a, see or a, who uh, fucking tried real hard man. tempest you, you know, you or abs, adventure or whatever. The, like the movie shows you how much certain companies care about getting their fucking characters in this movie. Mm. Fucking Capcom went is, super is Ryu, hard. Ryu like all Ryu up in is it? all Ryu and Chun Li are all over the place. Yeah, okay. they are the most visible characters in the entire film. Well, Wreck-It Ralph was big for Zangie. Uh, uh, Tracer's his phone number two. And, like silently buys a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I gotta see. Yeah, no, what? it that. And, and it's and the, the when they go into the the fucking item shop, the very first item they walk by is by the ability to do Hadoken. Now, what I want to know is is does your sister's category mm. of person, yes. <laughs> your demographic, right? Does that like is that a large profitable group uh, compared to people that go? Yeah, it's a, the thing I know. I so, like uh, yes. I, I, the hardcore is always the smaller what, niche. You know what it is for sure. It it is the size of fifty million dollars in one weekend, and then half that the next weekend. Yeah. Okay. That's the size because, because well, you remember when you grew out of video games around ninety five? No, <laughs> but that's what my sister did. Yeah. Right. And exactly. Like, you have to. I grew up, but and, but, and did business and, and did well at school. That. And, so and, if she sees these references again, she'll be like, oh, yeah. Right. And that's a lot of people compared to the it's hardcore, be, to yeah. a hardcore niche, right? For sure. But what, I, what I'm thinking is, is that that giant group of people mm -hmm. probably includes a huge, huge majority that wouldn't even bother, right, to mm -hmm. like go or like to read this. Or yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That wouldn't even bother to participate in the thing. So it's kind of like, dude. It's think think about it this way. Like diminishing every, returns every, on your, your every, attempt. Every lapsed person that you know that used to be way into comics or used to be way into games or used to be into whatever, right? That you, we know lots of people yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to pick, pick put it down to like a specific person, but yeah. And then they go that person, you know, yeah, somebody, like my, some, your sister, my brother. Somebody, my brother somebody, would be a great example. Somebody mentions yeah. it to them and they go, oh, "Batman's in there? I used to love Batman." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go see it. 
and that's that. Yeah. Just the, the all they need is that one tiny little fringe element. Yeah. One thing I will give the movie credit for, like genuine credit. I don't know what the fuck. Who who owns Gundam? Sunrise. Uh, Bandai. 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 Fucking Bandai must have had some goddamn specific conditions. Is it a is it a Barbados Gundam? No, it's the RX seventy eight. Okay. Because <laughs> I was like gonna go what? And the and it, right. it it is given the most respect of anything. Oh, yeah. Like it it is lavishly reproduced to the most granular detail possible. Perfect grade. To the point of when the the guy okay. turns it on. You get he uh, a fucking UI element comes up and it's the fucking boot screen in reverse that Amaro turns on in yeah, the first episode. Okay. Like it is yeah. it is slavish in its reproduction. It's gonna take Lou like seven years to watch this movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> so like that's the that's the one part of the movie that I went not like oh I'm glad that's the Gundam, mm -hmm. but I went wow they really spent a lot of work getting that one right but you know what's really weird i'm not into gundam at all like you guys but you i didn't know a gundam was in it i kind of want to see a gundam now in that movie yeah like i that sounds really cool to see that don't in worry big, in big nice cg don't worry they fucking kneecap the shit out of it by a character awkwardly screaming i choose form of gundam immediately beforehand sure but i expect that type of stuff <laughs> um so yeah, the biggest takeaway, this is a very bad movie, but this would be a very bad movie if all the pop culture stuff and all that controversy and all that nerd rage and all that anger was completely gone and it was just a completely original everything mm -hmm. because it's boring. It is nothing but exposition. It has an incredibly dull three-act predictable structure. So like it's and it's 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 a nothing movie. It there's nothing there. There's nothing like to so the interesting thing about this is that like virtual MMO setup uh, with characters doing similar things in danger in real life without all the references is a book called Snow Crash. <laughs> okay. It's just the same thing. But, well, but, it, but oh. it, 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 this is like one of the first ones. It's really, really early. And um, like How early are we talking? Uh, for, well, I'd have to look it up to tell you. But, 90s? Uh, when did Snow Crash come out? Snow Crash. Never heard of it. Uh, bu, 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 bu. Are biker mice in the movie? 1992. Are biker mice in the movie? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, no. Well, fuck it. And anyway, the, the toads are. The but 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 but, but think. Like, um, Ninja Turtles are. I know. Oh shit! I know the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> See, now it's now it's too <sighs> much. Everyone's in it. Now it's like, wow, you're really selling me on this. Goro fights the Ninja Turtles and fucking I forgot Iron my, Giant I forgot throws my, a Hadouken. I forgot my point. I had, I had, a, I was gonna get. I forgot. This is I, Mugen the movie. This is, yes, it is. Wow. Did you clap when you saw this it? This sucks. I will. I had a really good point, and I'm it's gone. Sure ah, Snow Crash. Snow Crash is the same thing, uh, but it takes all the pop culture stuff <sighs> out. Was where you were going with this. Uh, I can't. No, you I were can't looking sit, up the I, date on Snow. Crash. Yeah, and I got it, and it was ninety two, and I can't just sit here and try to remember what it was. So there never mind. But anyway, yeah, but yeah, it's like the. the Fuck, when, I when, know Ninja Turtles. When I wasn't rolling my <laughs> eyes at characters time. and Jason and Punisher and Punisher's not in there. Mm. Freddy Krueger is. Yeah, I don't really care. And Jason is. Yeah, I care about that. Uh, but I knew that. Someone yelled that at me. The, the, when I'm not rolling my eyes or like being embarrassed by like how it's trying to be Big Bang. Like, it feels like Big Bang Theory. But uh, when that's not uh, happening, which is... My sister loves Big Bang Theory. See, that's what I'm does. talking about. What uh, if it was called Salty Bet the Movie? Uh, that'd be different. <laughs> what if it was called The Ultimate Battle... Uh, what was that Newgrounds bit? Uh, the, the Ultimate Battle for Everything. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, ultimate but when, 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 oh, I'm, when I'm not sitting there, when I'm ultimate not sitting there and Destiny. rolling my eyes at the pop culture shit just being embarrassing... Like for ninety five percent of the movie, I'm just bored because the characters are flat and the plot goes nowhere and it's the same shit over. And over. Like, like just most most of the movie, you could remove all this stuff and this is like, this is a boring movie. This is a, just, just mm. this is the most boilerplate fucking Hollywood movie. Just the hap the unique stamp on it is video games and pop culture. Mm -hmm. There is one other thing that's super super fucking weird about that, and. In the universe that Ready Player ta One takes place in, I'm I'm going to assume that all culture just stopped entirely at 98, because despite being 40 years in the well, I mean it's even more. It's it? it's 2047. 
Uh, so that's 30 years from now. But there is nothing that I saw in that entire fucking movie except for, like, Tracer, I think. And the new Ninja Turtle. I heard that... Battle, Battleborn people are in there. Oh, yeah. Battleborn people are in every shot of the film. Because they thought it was going to be big. But, like, in in terms of the film. <laughs> yeah, in, no. They yeah. were making this for years. There's, so a, there's, a, there's a, a, apparently a Battleborn character in every single large group shot in wow. the entire film. Okay. But you like, couldn't recognize every, them if every, you tried. Everybody that they would actually spend time on or pan by significantly, like there's nothing after like the year 2000. Like it's like it's like society yeah. stopped. Well, in the book, it, it, it's kind of more that that stuff's out there, but all the cool kids in the Oasis know that it's only cool if you reference. <laughs> is the it Master shit. Chief in there? Yes, yeah. so Master one. Chief is in there in a scene that makes so little sense. Yeah. From a, but Master Chief would be in there. So Someone would want this to be is in a trailer. In the big battle scene, you see people running around on the street, and interspersed with shots of their avatars running around in the game. Mm -hmm. There are five kids running down the street, and they're all Master Chief, and they're running down a sidewalk shooting their guns. Okay. What is going to happen to them in five seconds after the camera stops looking at them? They're going to run into the street and die like like the, yeah, there's no, there die. is there are two parts to that one is the absolutely hilarious final fight when they cut back to a person driving through the streets and sees everyone invisible kung fu fighting in the fucking streets like assholes but none of them move because there's too many extras the only characters that get to move is the the master chief kids that get to move in that one shot wait wait hold on wait wait hold on Mm -hmm. People are in physical locations doing things? Oh, yeah. People are just on the street, one-to-one -one moving their character but, in the real world, I you blind in, to the real world around them. I thought them. you did this in, like, your house. Yeah, most, you're at home. Yeah. Most, most people do, but in the final scene, there are tens of thousands of people in the streets running around in every Geo direction. Geo-tracking as they yes, play? but they don't see the outside world, so they're just lucky that they're not hitting anyone else or... That's not what... No, it's they it's, do in the Oasis dude, at all. It's total nonsense. Like you're you're drive they're driving past it and they look out and everyone's like, "Yeah, oh, uh, in in directions, in locked into a spot because if they move, oh, every actor will just Christ. punch each other in the face." <laughs> okay, that's that's It's that's, it's that's, absolutely yeah, that's absurd. absurd. That's ridiculous. But my favorite part, and a friend of mine pointed out to me this, like the creepiness of it, if, if anything, is supposed to be how they describe the like the are the the giant evil army is just rows and rows of people yeah. locked into their their yeah. fucking headsets. and it does have a cool concept with the loyalty center where if you fucking uh, accrue too much debt, the uh, the evil corporation locks you into a fucking booth and basically turns you into a gold farmer. Right, right which right, is right. actually the coolest idea in the whole movie. Hmm. Because, like, people are, like, dying in, like, what are essentially VR slave camps. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's super wild. But there is a scene that sums up the whole movie. And it is a scene in which the bad guy is trying to convince Parzival that, man, hey, I'm just like you. And it is a scene in which a 50-year-old-plus businessman has an earpiece in his ear talking to the kids. And he has a team of people in his ear telling him what references the kids like and what who who wrote babysitters club that's meta and <laughs> and oh wow yeah i see yeah. and nah man you you just oh. you just you just think i'm a suit and all i want to do is make money but you don't get it man oh. i i love all the same Fuck. stuff that you do I love Babysitter's Club and just chilling out and playing Joust all night. Ouch. And it's a, it's a whole scene, and it's just, like, astonishing oh, how tone that, deaf it is. That's crazy. It's, that's, they don't even realize. Yeah. yeah. It's it's nuts. <laughs> like, it like, might as well just be Spielberg talking to you yourself, like, in the film. It's crazy. So that's What's, my that's yeah. that's my review of Ready Player One. It's a bad movie. You know, what are you movie. talking about? Spielberg, Steven Spielberg loves Overwatch. Dude's like ninety years old. What are you crazy? He's, he's like seventy or something. He's got a, such a sick Reinhardt dude. He's an amazing. Like, you know what the weirdest thing is? Yeah. Yeah. Blade Runner got wasn't able to get in, but Alien got in. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it's it, is did who's, uh, who's Blade, right? Uh, uh, Warner Brothers is. I mean, is, Ridley's the director. He doesn't own it I himself. Thought Warner Brothers did. Um, <laughs> you know, and al- and the alien pops out of Goro, which makes me think that like what? Do- Sorry, what? Yeah. There is a fucking xenomorph that was in a show con. Yeah, this is amazing. It makes me think that we it should has run out and go it, see this it, today. It, it Willie. Immediately, it honestly makes me think that it was part of the joint deal between like that's the WB so and, OB. And that oh, shut up. Remember how Alien and MKX Matt, was like Baraka? Matt, you Imagine know if it was a four-armed you know alien. that it doesn't matter how much you cross your arms and watch this movie, it's gonna get you. At some that point, got me. it's going to get you. So There's Mechagodzilla. I, I, I would like to this take... This is like all my favorites. Did you clap? I would like to take a second <laughs> to address the number one complaint that I saw people leveraging against me the other day, which is, Pat, you're, you're crazy. You exaggerate everything. The movie's not that bad. And, like, I guess the movie isn't that bad. It's fucking... It's gruel. It's like... It's... It's... It's, it's movie, mm-hmm. right? It's nothing. Mm-hmm. You started and, this by saying it's a 5 on 10. Right. And I am like, there are parts of it which personally embarrass me, but only in the theater because I'm there. Mm-hmm. And it's talking – it's fucking Steve Buscemi with the fucking double skateboards. It, it, the What I didn't think about until, like, all of this was how um, – the besides your sister and my brother and yeah. so on, well, right? Everyone has like a family. Fucking my like siblings. Yes. My siblings are exactly the same. Exactly. Way. Peripheral outside. Like I remember that. Cool. Yeah. Right. Besides that, the description of like you said, like people from like college and stuff, where it's like people that are super into it and, and are not like that. They're, they're as up to current and and whatnot as, as as I guess as we are and such, but um, just having a very different kind of attitude towards it where mm-hmm. it's just kind of like it never gets tired it never gets old it's awesome every time i see it it's the best i'm gonna wear the t-shirt does this have with... a transformer in it i have to go see it right and 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 um it's funko pops the movie it is funko pops funko the movie. yes thank you it thank is, you thank i'm you. gonna wear a t-shirt with not dr strange <laughs> on it but the funko pop of dr strange absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm, 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 it, that mm-hmm. that is exactly what it is. Yes. And and again, yes. it is not about. It is not the typical nerds complaining about shit of. <laughs> I can't believe that the Godzilla was not the way it was in this. Like, who gives a shit? Like, and in I fact, do. most of those things are are like on point. Surprisingly, even. Does your sister own a Funko Pop? No. Would she? Uh, it, Princess Bride Funko Pops, which I believe Prob- do exist. I'm sure they do. Uh, yes. Probably. If I got her one, she would uh, proudly display it. That's it, it is. that dude. That's the fucking it's Funko Pops. It's movie. fucking Funko Pops the movie. And the person who would buy a Funko Pop is the person who would love this movie. It's true. That's the exact same audience. It's Max. Exactly it doesn't same. matter what the quality is. Max loves this it's movie. It's cheap is that and it's true? there. He has a lot of Funko Pops. And oh, it's cheap does. and it's there. And it's the thing that I like. So look at it. Yeah. Dude, 100%. <laughs> you completely. you Matt, oh, that's genius. That you is completely the most it. accurate thing about all of this. You just think about a wall of Funko Pops that are like domin- like a dominant obelisk of, of shadow is displayed on the con floor. Yeah. Yep. Like you look at the wall and you're like, yep. that's the final battle. Cause it's not that any of us don't like all of these things or think they're awesome. Dude, I love crossover stuff. Every one of these little elements is from is from like, a thing that like, we're like, fuck yeah, back let's, to the future. Let's compare I fucking love Joust. Do you know how much I Dude, love Willie, Joust? Willie, let's back it up a bit. Let's all compare how people feel about Ready Player One versus how people feel about Wreck It Ralph when it's the same fucking thing. Right. We didn't have right. any problem with right. Wreck It Ralph. Yeah, in fact, I got fucking st- Flip my shit when it was fucking Robotnik and Zangief yeah, hanging out. Yeah. Cause that's awesome. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. It's about no. the context with within it is. It's not because Wreck It Ralph didn't present itself as look at these video game things and clap you fucking troglodytes. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was <laughs> it was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was hey, look, here's a Disney movie and it's in a va- it's in a vague video game world, and I think we kind of knew. It's like maybe like two or three days before the movie came out. Oh, there's like Capcom characters in there. It's like is Mario in there? We, we didn't know, but the movie didn't build itself oh, around man. the yeah. fucking idea. Nintendo yeah. would not touch this. There is 
There are Is company, there no Nintendo? There are companies that are very absent. Well, they're also working on their own shit. Yeah, yeah. they wouldn't. They so wouldn't. They wouldn't that. fucking spurt out all the good stuff. Nintendo that is like this massive black hole in the movie. Yeah, and a, like especially with all the Capcom characters. Are you telling around. me that no one wants to be fucking Link? Yeah. No. <laughs> Everyone it, would be the like, main character I would be almost Link. is Link. Yeah, yeah, yeah he looks like an elf pretty guy. Yeah. No, man, it it like there is absolutely a Funko Pop for everything you love, but that doesn't mean that you should love Funko Pops because they're just trying to trick you. Because it's it, it, like there's a difference. You and if you can't see it, then it, it, the, absolutely, the, this, this yeah. movie is the equivalent uh, 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 of uh, uh. Family Guy episode. Going remember that time we hung out with so and so and thing with oh, the movie. Man. Remember that time we played World of Warcraft and Leroy Jenkins was there? That's funny, right? Well, you mean the South Park version of Family Guy where the manatees hit the yes. button and the, yes, <laughs> yeah. right. right. It's yeah. So I yeah. literally bought a Funko Pop over the weekend too. Did you? Yeah. Where is it in Wooly's house? It's at my house. It's the <laughs> it's the Pixel ones, and it's Jason and yes, Jason. Mm -hmm. It looks fine. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I I owned I. Unironically own two Funko Pops, uh, Godzilla and Jason. Ready Player One wants to tell you that Dude, it's the Cuphead ones are not Pops; they're yeah. just Funko presents. I'll buy them for you one time. Ready Player One tells you that it's Wrecked Ralph, but it's actually Pixels. Oh, uh, oh, okay. yeah. All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. That was pretty comprehensive. Who skipped that shit? Ooh. AKA the podcast. Man, I can't believe they killed Mario in that movie. I can't believe they killed Mario in, in such Ready a Player gruesome One. fashion. <laughs> too. They hung him by his entrails. Was fucked. Some would say not gruesome enough. Yeah, he had it coming though. Yeah, he did. 